All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So today's video, I'm going to show you how to remove a, the stereo and CD changer from a first-gen Honda Pilot. So in my case, this is a 2005. The 03 to 05 is identical, and then the 06 to 08 is pretty much the same, just looks a little bit different. All right, so I'm in the car. Uh, you can see the panels are already kind of loose, but I, I'm going to show you exactly what you have to do to remove, in my case, the factory stereo. I'm going to be replacing it with an aftermarket stereo. And also, I have the six disc CD changer down here. Obviously, that won't work anymore once we replace the factory stereo. So I'm going to be replacing it with uh, what would have been, I guess, on an LX model. It's just a little storage pouch area. All right, so the first thing we want to do is remove this panel here. Now this panel is just pressed in and it's held in place. You can see the little spring clips on the back. So the easiest way to do that is there's this little, in my case, this little blank right here. If you take a very small screwdriver and pop that out, it gives you a little bit of leverage. So this is just snapped in place and it helps to have a non-marring plastic pry tool like this right here because what you need to do is get in the corners and pry this out and you want to be really careful because once you get one side loose you don't just want to pull because the whole thing is held together in the middle by this these thin plastic strips so if you just crank it out from this side You'll snap this in half, and these are hard to get. You can't buy them new anymore. So the best thing to do is once you get this side loose, come over here and work the pry tool around until you get this whole thing out. You can then disconnect the airbag switch. You can also disconnect the ones on the other side. In my case, they're not really in the way. I'm just going to let them hang right there. So once we get that out, it will reveal the four... They have a Phillips head, but don't use a Phillips head. Use an eight millimeter socket to remove one, two, on this side, there's three and four. And then this unit will slide out. I'll show you that in a minute. Moving on down here. So to remove the CD changer, it's just a little bit different. Basically these side pieces, these plastic side pieces right here, same thing. You want to carefully take your pry tool and you want to get behind the piece on the side and pry it forward. Again, remember this is old plastic and then it pries out. You can see there's a clip up there. There's a clip down there. And that is what holds each side in place. And a couple clips. That's what holds that in. So once we get behind there, there will be four Phillips head screws. So here and here, and then the same spots on that side. So I went ahead and I removed the four Phillips head screws. Once those are removed, you kind of reach down, pull out the ashtray. Well, it's not an ashtray, it goes right there, not an ashtray the storage compartment and just yank. This is held in by nothing more than those screws and in the back there, there's a couple of clips that hold it underneath there. So I thought a neat place to put a USB port would be under here. That way you can have a cord plugged in up under there and then your phone could kind of just sit in this area here while it's plugged in. So I'm probably gonna do that as I'm installing the aftermarket stereo. I have one that just use a hole saw to cut the hole and it pops into place. There's a little blue light right there. But I'll just go next to it in this area here. All right, so then once that's out, you can see it reveals some more eight millimeter bolts that I need to remove. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the stereo bolts out and these. Thank you. 
just make sure that if you ever plan on putting the factory stereo back that you know your radio code I mean even if you disconnect the battery you need the radio code it's usually in the owner's manual or in the glove box so I want to drop those screws down in there Out, this just comes right out. So we'll just pull the antenna connection straight out. Then we have a couple harnesses. You can see there's three harnesses that were moved, and there's just a clip on the top. You just push down and pull on all three of them, and then it pops right out. All right, so now for down here, kind of the same situation. So obviously I'm in an EX model here. Each model is a little bit different. And the higher trim level you go, they kind of have this whole console configured differently. All right, so we kind of pulled the whole thing out as an assembly like this. And then if we look at the side, you can see that this bracket is holding, uh, obviously, our HVAC and the CD changer. So we'll just need to remove these two screws on each side of the CD changer, unplug it, and it will come out of the bracket. Okay, so here's the tray that I'm talking about. Obviously removed CD changer. You can see it's just basically a blank just a blank for that all right so this goes in with the little slots on the bottom and you'll see it only kind of fit in here one way and this can just slide in there's a couple little tabs it fits in Alright, so once we get in the bracket, we just kind of tuck this top of it under. Let's see, that goes like that. So then, obviously, everything else is the reverse or removal. Put that piece of trim on. Put your side pieces on. And then, obviously, each radio installation is going to be different. So I'm using a Metra dash kit just to put a standard double-din unit in here. And I'll give you a little preview of what that looks like when it's done. But it's wire-to-wire. -wire. The one thing I'll say is that if you have a pilot that has a factory subwoofer, uh, the stereo itself, the factory stereo has a built-in amplifier for the factory subwoofer. And it's just a mono output, but it's a speaker level output. So you cannot just um, replace the radio and keep the factory subwoofer working. But you can keep it working by intercepting the wiring in here and putting a little mono amp you can get one small enough that you could actually hide it back in here and then use the standard RCA subwoofer outputs from your new stereo to connect it to that amp back there. And just to keep the factory subwoofer working, the amp does have to be able to drive a 2 ohm subwoofer because that's what the factory one is. Alright, so here is the finished product. Got the radio installed. Said I would show you what it looks like. Turned out real nice dash kit works really good 
with this a Toto stereo I got on Amazon. But I'll do another video on the stereo itself. Because it's kind of just a generic doubled in. But for the money, probably can't be beat. Alright, so hopefully the video was helpful. Just wanted to show you how to take the uh, dash apart. Like I said, I switched out this for a storage pocket here. Took the CD changer out. And then obviously we replaced the factory unit. Something a lot more useful now. Especially with the addition of a backup camera. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more. Until next time, we'll see you later.